Hello, I'm JW. This time I'm going to have a look at measuring resistance, and uh, measuring resistance with a fairly old piece of equipment, which you don't generally see anymore. Now, of course, on an electrical installation you can, of course, measure resistance, and that's a fairly common thing with various testing. But uh, a problem with doing that is that most multifunction testers designed for that only put a current of around 200 milliamps through the circuit when you're doing the measurement. And while that's perfectly adequate to measure resistance, the problem with that is that uh, if you've got, say, a loose connection or, say, a bit of conduit with a bit of corrosion or something on it, putting only 200 milliamps through there isn't necessarily going to give you a particularly relevant result. So uh, what we're going to look at here is another piece of equipment which puts substantially more current through there, and if we had a dicky connection or something, it's going to basically blow that wide open, and then you can obviously uh, see that there's a fault there. So uh, let's have a look at it and see what kind of current it actually puts through there. So this is the thing we've got, and this is a V339, it's made by Claire, a company which is now part of the Seawood Group. And as it says here, it's a high current ohmmeter, and it also has this 40 volt RCD test facility, but uh, looking at the uh, actual resistance measurement part of this. Now this is a relatively old piece of equipment, it comes in this uh, wooden case, and a hinge lid there. It's also quite a large and heavy item, so it's quite uh, substantial in size there. And all it does is measure resistance, so it doesn't have any other fancy features. So uh, let's see what we have inside. Now, as it's common with most of this style of stuff, instructions come in the lid here, so uh, obviously you don't get lost. And it's an analog reading there on the scale. This particular one has two scales. It does ohms and milliohms, so it's basically 0 to 2 ohms, 0 to 200 milliohms, or 0 0.2 ohms. And you've got the switch here for the two ranges to be selected. Unlike uh, most modern equipment, this is not battery powered. It actually needs to plug into the mains for its power because it puts such a high current through and it has this indicator that says that the uh, 240 volts is switched on, not 230. And then we've just got a the button there to uh, actually do the test. Now, so this is an old piece of equipment and it was obtained in a used condition and unknown what state of working, but uh, it does at least uh, mostly work, which we'll see later. Calibration void if broken, you see they're already uh, broken and uh, falling off, so uh, really don't care about that. So what we've got on the top here then is the mains lead, which is this one here, and this basically plugs into your normal uh, 30 amp outlet, which is what actually powers the device. Now of course one disadvantage of this is if you don't have any electricity available at the site, you can't actually use this piece of equipment. However, bearing in mind that it's designed to be used by electricians, and therefore some kind of temporary supply could easily be uh, fixed up, even if there wasn't one. And then the other two wires we've got are these ones, which of course are what you connect to the thing you're going to be testing got these uh, fairly large clips here, and uh, there's a cable going in to each one. And although this is lo looks like just a single wire, this is actually two in here. So this is doing a four-wire measurement, so you've got uh, a wire in here for the current, and then another one for the voltage. So then you don't have to account for the resistance of these leads, which as you can see are fairly long. So it has that uh, sort of built in as well. And other than that, that's pretty much uh, the deal there. The uh, instructions here generally refer to things like confirming the continuity of protective conductors and bonding conductors, and also for ring final circuit conductors, which is that deal where you have the circuit in a big loop, so it goes from the consumer unit around to all the socket outlets and then returns to the consumer unit at the end, a fairly uh, thing that's generally fairly unique to the UK. And then there's some other instruction things as well. Now I'll put a link to these instructions in the description to this video. So if you do want to read those then you can find a link there rather than trying to read it from the screen of the video here. Now let's just go a quick test see what this thing does. So I've got the thing here just propped up a bit so you can see the actual reading there without the reflection. And I've got the clamp meter here just basically around one of the leads, so we can then see what sort of current is actually being passed through there. And because this is a mains powered item, the current it's applying through here is actually AC, unlike if you say used a battery powered item, where of course that will be applying DC. So AC current there, and we're going to select the milliohms range because what we're measuring is just this short piece of conduit over here, so basically it's just that tiny bit there, so we would expect the resistance to be pretty much uh, zero or somewhere around there so we wouldn't expect to see much of a movement on the scale here at all. And it'd be the bottom scale in this case, of the milliohms one. So uh, set to milliohms there, so we'll just switch on the supply, we should see the indicator come on there. So there we have it, the orange lights come on, that's a neon indicator. And then we'll press the button and we should see the current on here. Now one thing that Swiss uh, does have, because the current used is so large, 
this actually has a thermal cutout inside so if you held the button down for an extended time something inside will heat up and then it will just cut off the thing so the idea here is you don't apply the test for an extended time you press the button read the uh, reading here and then that's pretty much the test complete now it's certainly not intended to apply the current for a long period of time and so it does have that thermal cutout inside so anyway let's see what kind of current we're getting so obviously it's saying zero there and this reads in amps uh, directly so let's have a go so there we are, about 32 amps there, and we can see that the reading here is uh, incredibly small. It was only basically barely moving on the scale. And again, that's what you expect, obviously, from having such a short piece of conduit there. So uh, 32 amps or so, vastly more than the 200 milliamps or 0.2 amps that a typical meter would provide. Uh, the point of that is if you had uh, screwed connections such as here, for example, this is obviously uh, just a fairly new one. But of course, these can then become corroded and damaged. So uh, if you put, say, 200 milliamps through, it might just find a very small path to get through there and show us everything was OK. And of course, if this was corroded and busted, a very high current is likely to cause this to overheat and be damaged. And then, of course, you would know that there was some kind of problem with the continuity. And of course, in a fault situation, say this was a piece of installation and you had the live conductors inside, one of them shorted onto the metal conduit. In that situation, the current that's going to flow or attempt to flow is going to be very large. So much better to have something like this, which is going to bust the connection open and show as a fault, rather than wait until an actual fault occurred, which could then uh, blow the connection apart, rather than uh, trip the circuit breaker or blow the fuse. So it's kind of the point of having the high current test. Now let's have a look inside, and uh, it's just basically fixing with these four screws in the corners. It's got these things for calibration void, but uh, obviously they're gone, so who cares? And there was a label here, it said the calibration was last done in about 2003, so grossly out of date anyhow, sort of 15 plus years ago. And uh, so this is all uh, timber here. You know, there is a bit of a gap here where the thing has sort of moved apart there, so you may look to see it to uh, get that replaced or repaired there. And I'm probably going to refinish the case as well because it is fairly uh, scratched and uh, scuffed up on the outside. But nevertheless, it does work, so if we just take out these four screws here, should then be able to lift the entire thing out of there and it's only just the three wires that go in the back here so it should all be fairly straightforward and self-contained and of course we have uh, unplugged it before dismantling the equipment as obviously this is a mains powered item you definitely wouldn't really put your fingers in there when it was still plugged in so that's the screws removed so this panel then should just lift away which it certainly appears to And over we can then see what we've got inside. So uh, on the front panel here then we've just simply got the back of the actual meter there and then again the two switches there just the press button which looks to be a micro switch and then the uh, rotary switch there for the two uh, scale choices and just the on indicator on the top there. And we've got a date on the back of here which says 24th of June 1993 which presumably is when it was actually manufactured. Here's a look inside, and uh, there's not a huge amount in here, but uh, again, it's a very simple device, so you wouldn't necessarily expect there to be. What we've got here is a large transformer, a uh, toroidal type there. So we're going to have basically the mains input on this side, and then we've got the larger output wires here, the black and the white. And then the black one here goes through these resistors at the bottom here. Now there's actually five of those, but they're all in series, so the black wire going in here at the bottom corner through this one it just links through there through there and through that one and then we've got our yellow wire coming out on the top over there so although there's five they're all basically in series forming one large resistor and again metal case one of course designed for high power let's say 30 odd amps going through this then uh, obviously you would need that a white one here which goes across and we've got this device here which is going to be the thermal cutout device so it's going to be a bimetallic strip which when it heats up will of course bend and then it will break the circuit so if you held down the button for too long this of course will heat up and then cut it off after a certain amount of time otherwise the uh, 30 amps going through here would cause something to overheat and melt and again it's not necessary to keep the current on for a long period it's purely there to uh, get the reading and then you are done terminal strip over there which of course just connects to the various other items you can switch it on the front panel and then i've got our three wires coming in here from the main supply and the two test leads. You can see the test leads here, it's got these uh, multiple wires within and again that's so it's got the uh, voltage and current lines there. We actually seem to have three there, the uh, 
grey, black and yellow. That's certainly a uh, custom manufactured flex item there. It's going down onto the board there. And our main supply coming in is the line neutral and the earth connection on that side. Here's the thermal cutout. So essentially the full current is going through this uh, piece here. So just inside and outside connections there. And essentially when the current goes through this, this will heat up. And then as it bends, when it gets to a certain point, it will click over and break the circuit. And then once the circuit's broken, of course, it will cool and then click back the other way. So just a safety device there to avoid someone holding the button down for too long or, for example, if the button jammed in the on position. That then would cut it off after a short amount of time. Here's a look at one of the resistors. So five of them, they're all basically the same and they're all in series. So it's just making one large resistor there. And the only function of those is going to be to limit the current because in theory the ends of these leads could be uh, shorted together and obviously in a short circuit situation the current could be very high so just got these in series with that to uh, limit the current to a uh, modest value in the sort of region of that 30 amps that we saw previously. And again they're large uh, metal case jobs and can be wire wound inside so that they uh, don't melt and overheat. And we see they've also bolted them down to this metal frame here at the bottom which extends throughout the entire thing so some additional heat dissipation there as well. Now one thing that is a bit bizarre is that it's on the outside here, we've got this plastic grill here, so presumably for cooling purposes, there's obviously a fair amount of heat to create inside. But if we look on the other side of that plastic, then it's directly next to the transformer, but we've got this gigantic piece of uh, plastic and paper type of assembly here, which pretty much covers all of the ventilation slots, so that seems a bit of a fail in the design. You would have thought that uh, this should have been fixed down in some fashion to at least allow some ventilation, but as you can see it's just sitting there pretty much covering uh, all of the slots up completely. So what a uh, deal with that is isn't uh, entirely clear. And uh, so there's just a view of the entire thing again. There is a cable grip at the top here and then the three wires just come through the holes on the back here and they do actually have their own individual holes drilled through. So very decent design and that's just a storage compartment there for where they are when this thing obviously is being transported. And then the only other thing of note here really is this meter here, which is obviously the uh, output reading there. See the back of it here. And uh, we've just got on the back here the two terminals which connect to the meter, small circuit board with a few resistors and things on there. And then here we've got two variable resistors on this end, and they're actually on the underside of the board. And this is presumably where you would set the actual uh, calibration or the uh, actual meter itself. So Generally you'd opportunity to short these together and set it to zero or apply a known resistance and set it to uh, obviously the correct value. So it does have the facility for adjustment and I have marked it here as 2 and 0.2 so it's going to be 1 for each of the two scales. And again we've still got three wires coming over to that so it's going to be a common and then one for each of the things depending on which you've selected from the switch here. And you see that one of the wires goes over to the switch there anyhow so it's just going to pick one or the other depending on what you've selected on the front switch. Now this meter does show zero when it's uh, in the off position and I've just connected the two leads here together so basically it should stay pretty much at the zero when the button is pressed. If it moves to anywhere else then obviously it would require some adjustment because obviously you're not supposed to be measuring anything else other than the thing you're connected to which in this case is absolutely nothing. So we'll try it on the uh, milliamp scale first and see how far it moves if anywhere. So it is moving a little small bit, so it's sort of two uh, divisions on the scale there. Let's try the ohms one as well, which will be the top scale. And again, it does move a little tiny bit, so uh, may need some adjustment. So it's more likely that it's going to be to uh, connect these to a known resistance and then adjust the thing so it gives the correct reading here, so like one ohm or something. That's just setting it to zero at that end isn't necessarily going to be particularly accurate. So. There you are, but uh, one problem with that of course is you're going to need a resistance of high power. You can't just get one of those quarter watt things and uh, connect that to the end because putting 30 amps through one of them it will just destroy itself and set on fire. So something we may need to uh, look into getting. But uh, anyway it seems to work and uh, certainly uh, puts out the current required. And I say there's not a huge amount in here anyway that can go wrong so it's just basically the transformer and those uh, other resistors and a few uh, switches on the top. So look there at the Claire V339A high current ohm meter and uh, that's not the kind of thing you necessarily can buy anymore but uh, still quite useful because certainly things like testing steel conduit or other 
long bonding conductors, for example, you want to make sure that they are obviously continuous and that they can deal with high current as well. Certainly if they're like a loose connection or something, then could show as perfectly fine on, say, a couple of hundred milliamps, but uh, not fine when you put your 30 amps through there. And certainly things like protective bonding, if there is a fault then it's quite likely a fairly high current is going to flow through there. You don't want it to be uh, busting apart and failing just because some loose connection or somebody attached it to a pipe with a bit of paint underneath. So that's it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.